Just one look at the iPhone 15 is enough to say that it's a totally different phone from what we had before. It looks differently, performs differently, feels differently, smells the same. <laughs> Seems like a good phone to recommend, but only after I start using it did I see how big of a deal this phone is. It takes everything we loved in pro iPhones and puts it into a more budget-friendly, colorful package. Take the camera, for example. One of the biggest hurdles of people who bought regular iPhones all the way since iPhone XS was the absence of a telephoto camera. Now, the 15 has a two-time zoom option, and instead of getting grainy and low-res images, now we can feast our eyes on gorgeous shots, and all that is possible thanks to the 48-megapixel sensor taken straight from the iPhone 14 Pro, and that is a bigger deal than you think, bridging the gap between regular and pro iPhones. Now, if you take the 15 and put its camera against the camera of the 14 Pro, finding the winner will be really hard, because the main camera of the iPhone 15, as I said, shoots in 24 megapixels by default. And that means only one thing, much more detail. The shots it produces have a ton of little detail, well-preserved textures, and a small amount of noise. And the best part is that even if you forget to turn on that 2x zoom, you can still crop the photo without a starting to look like something from the 1980s. But of course, if you really want to zoom in, I'd advise you to do that little tap and turn on the 2x zoom. The zoom works exactly as it did on the 14 Pro and as it does on the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. Crops the center of a big sensor, leaving us with a perfectly good 12 megapixel photo. It is not very noisy and the photonic engine works wonders, preserving natural colors, highlights and treating shadows as it should. Sometimes when I look at the zoom photos, taken on the regular 15, I get the feeling that they're actually better than the 2x photos from the 14 Pro. If you thought that we're done with camera tricks, you're wrong, because there's one more feature in the camera that just takes it that one step further. Portraits. What's so special about portraits? You don't need to switch to the portrait mode to shoot portraits now. The iPhone 15 camera now captures the depth information even when you're shooting regular photos. If you see this little F in the corner, this means the depth data is available. Now I can just take a shot and enable the depth effect and editing. What's especially impressive is that I can manually choose the focus point of the shot afterwards. I can already feel this feature saving thousands of photos every day. Where the improved algorithms really shine is in low light conditions. The iPhone 15 now can shoot the same great low light photos as the pro iPhones. The sensor lets in much more light and the photos have more details, better colors and less noise. So there is a question to be asked. Do you really need the 15 Pro? What can help Help me answer this question are the videos. iPhone 15 does not have all the fancy bells and whistles when it comes to recording videos. As the 15 Pro does, iPhone 15 cannot record videos in lock or ACES, but it can do 4K 60 HDR, which is more than enough for 90% of people. If you are not a professional filmmaker and you're not planning on shooting movies with your iPhone, I am sure the camera of the iPhone 15 will be more than enough for you. You can still do cinematic videos in 4K 30 30 FPS and action videos in 2.8K. I can't say that I wasn't at least hoping to get cinematic video at 4K 60 FPS and action videos at 4K, but apparently we'll see that next year in the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro. Now let's take a quick pause and talk about this video sponsor, UPDF. UPDF is the cool AI powered tool for editing PDFs that has recently gained ChatGPT powers. You can highlight text with different colors, strike through it, underline, or even add a squiggly line. You can add text boxes, call out text, stickers, etc. I especially love the ability to add personal stamps and signatures. All that is super easy to do, but what makes it so special is the built-in AI assistant that allows you to do two great things. Chat with PDF and chat with AI. Chatting with your PDF makes it super convenient and easy to research anything and absorb new information without spending hours on reading yourself. UPDF's AI does a really good job at studying the PDF file, so the responses are always on point, and if you need a bit more assistance, you can always just chat with AI itself. It can summarize stuff, explain, or even translate. The translation in particular is super accurate and fast, so yeah, AI does make a difference here. The app is available on macOS, Windows, iOS, and Android. For me, UPDF is a no-brainer. It's simply one of the best PDF editors I've ever used, so click the link in the description to get it with an exclusive 63% discount.
If you've been watching this video closely, you may now have a question running in your head. What about the ultra wide camera? Well, there's not much to say about it. It is absolutely the same as on the iPhone 14. The only difference is the improved algorithms. So the photos are slightly better in every way, but these improvements are so subtle that I can't wait to tell you about a different thing that I absolutely loved about this phone. Tell me, how do you imagine the regular iPhone? All design, bright colors and a display with a notch. Now forget all that because everything is different now. And the display is for me the most noticeable difference that pushes this phone so close to the pro iPhones that $800 starts seeming like a fairly small price. The display of the iPhone 15 now has 66% of features that make displays in the pro iPhone so good. High brightness and dynamic island. I have a feeling that this display is the same display used on the 14 Pro but with a software lock because it goes up to the same 2000 nits of brightness when outdoors which is absolutely crazy for a phone like this. Dynamic Island is also exactly the same as on the 14 and 15 Pro. It has all the same features, animations, and even size is exactly the same. The only thing that makes up those 33% missing from this display for it to be called Pro is the Pro Motion. And despite how great this high refresh rate is, the 60 hertz of the 15 does not look bad in any way. Everything is just as snappy, fast, and fluid. Fluidity of the interface and Dynamic Island is what I was really concerned about when I was watching the event. I thought for Dynamic Island to look impressive, 120 hertz is mandatory, but as it turns out, all you need is a fast processor. And the A16 is exactly that. It may not be a three nanometer chip like the A17 Pro is, but it packs just as many CPU cores and only lacks one GPU core. Despite everything Apple claims, the real world difference between these two phones is not that huge. The A17 Pro is slightly faster in benchmarks and can launch games like like Resident Evil, but the A16 is not a slouch either. It effortlessly pushes through everything you throw at it without making a sweat. All games, apps, and the most complex multitasking workflows are a breeze for the iPhone 15. All the horsepower of the processor, however, is idling most of the time. The phone doesn't really take the advantage of the super fast processor, but not because it can't do it, but because Apple limits it. Take the USB Type-C, for example. The A16 doesn't have the special controller for the USB 3.0, which limits the transfer speed for the port all the way down to the speed of a lightning. There is no doubt that A16 with proper software can transfer data at even faster speeds than that, but Apple being Apple. Aside from that minor inconvenience, the updated connectivity does make life with this iPhone more comfortable and convenient. Now I can use one cable for my MacBook, iPhone, iPad, and AirPods. And the best part about the updated port is that I can use this phone as a power bank. The iPhone 15 can charge basically any device that you can plug into it. And if the device you're plugging in has the power delivery support, the devices will decide which one has the least charge and charge that. This is a real quality of life improvement and it's not the only one. Because the overall design has also gotten better and more ergonomic. The edges of the aluminum body are now more rounded, just like on the Pro models, making the phone much more comfortable to hold. There is no way difference, however, since the materials used are exactly the same as before. Well, maybe except the back glass because it now looks looks wildly different from how it used to look in previous iPhones. Now it is frosted and doesn't look at all like what we expected. The color of the phone is very muted and subtle. I would even go as far as to say that the iPhone 15 is like 50 shades of white. I'm a dominant. Every color, except black, is some shade of white. There are only two places on the phone where the colors are really pronounced, the aluminum shell and the glossy area around the camera. But you're going to use this phone in the case, so it doesn't matter really. What does matter is the battery life, and that is sadly one of the least interesting things about the phone. Apparently the rumors were true and the batteries inside the phones are slightly bigger than before, but in practice there is virtually no difference from the iPhone 14. I think it is more sensible to say that the battery life on the iPhone 15 is very similar to the battery of the 14 Pro. But not the 14 Pro I have right now with a degraded battery that dies before 5 p.m., but the healthy 14 Pro with a healthy new battery. The Pro iPhones are now obsolete. That is exactly what I want to say right now. The regular iPhone 15 now has more Pro features than the Pro iPhone just two years ago. And it costs way less than any Pro iPhone that Apple sells. So does this make it the best iPhone Apple ever created? Probably yes. At least from the regular person's point of view, it has fantastic cameras, great display, ergonomic design, and very powerful processor that doesn't sacrifice battery life. What else can you wish for for $800?